I got a question. If you guys know so much about women, how come you're here at, like, a gas and sip on a Saturday night, completely alone, drinking beers, no women anywhere? Hello again. Alright, so I'm gonna do a quick review of Say Anything. I watched this a couple weekends ago. I think it was either a Saturday or Sunday morning. Didn't have much going on, and I'd always just been interested to see what this movie's all about. It's kind of a classic from the 80s. Um, you know, like a, a young high school romance movie. So I threw it on. And of course it's got John Cusack. This is probably one of his his biggest um, film roles. Or one that he's most known for. Especially when he was a younger actor. So Say Anything. It's from 1989. It's written and directed by Cameron Crowe. Who earlier had wrote uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Which is an awesome awesome 80s movie about high school. Uh, this is the first one that he actually directed though, so writing and directing. And it stars, like I mentioned, John Cusack. Um, he plays Lloyd Dobler. And then the story's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. So he's kind of, he's not really a geek or anything. He's not like unpopular. He's just a guy in high school. They don't really make him, you know, he's not really written as anything. He's not like a jock. He's not a dork. He's just kind of in the middle. People like him. He has a group of friends and stuff. And uh, some of his friends are pretty recognizable. Uh, Lily Taylor plays one of his friends. Um, you probably recognize her from hmm, 80s stuff. A um, couple of other girls. Um, he hangs out, mostly with, oh, <laughs> hangs out mostly with girls. He has like two or three girls that he hangs out with. And then he lives with his older sister, who's actually played by his real life older sister, Joan Cusack. And she has a, a boy. And they don't really come into play much in the story, but that's kind of his his living situation. Lives with his older sister, who has a, a son, and then he has like two, three girlfriends that he's closest with. And then it just starts out he wants to go on a date with um, a girl named Diane Court. She's played by Ione Skye. Uh, she didn't really do much out of the 80s. I don't think she was in River's Edge which I did a review of a while ago. But other than that, I don't think she really did much after the 80s, Ioni Sky, And so she's like a really, really smart girl at the school. She's really pretty. Um, everybody likes her, um, but she's also just kind of known for really not doing much. She's mostly focused on her schoolwork. She's a valedictorian, valedictorian for the school. She gives her speech when they graduate and all that. But, um, yeah... She doesn't really party or anything like that. I don't know if they mentioned she does like sports or anything like that. But so, anyways, and she lives with her dad. Um, her dad's played by John Mahoney, most recognizable as the dad from Frasier. And so, yeah, that's the premise. She's based. She's uh, Diane's really focused on her schoolwork, getting into college and everything like that. She's gonna be traveling to Europe to go to school um, after the summer. And so the movie starts at the end of their high school. They all uh, graduated. And it's, so the rest of the movie just takes place over the summer, pretty much. And ja, uh, Lloyd asks her out on a date, and she somewhat reluctantly agrees. And they go out, and, you know, they like each other. And it's kind of the whole premise. You know, they spend the summer together, and then they have the decision to make later. Um, is he gonna try to go with her to Europe? Is she gonna stay to be with him? Um, after the, you know, they kind of fall in love and stuff. Decisions, tough decisions to make for uh, teenagers, you know, just coming out of high school. So, and then there's also a bit of a side story with her dad, and that comes into play too later. But, side story, not a lot to it. So that's kind of basically it. Um, I feel like there's not a lot going on. You see this story a lot. It's very, you know, they make fun of it with stuff like not another teen movie and stuff like that. And so, of course, there's a lot of movie connections like Sixteen Candles, which is one of John Cusack's earlier movies. Um, and so, like, the 80s version, a lot of 80s movies, Can't Hardly Wait, would be, like, your 90s version of this. And then, more recently, one that I really liked was uh, Spectacular Now. So that'd be, like, our... 2013 version of this, you know, high school love story. 
it does have that very uh, John Hughes vibe. So, like I mentioned, 16 Candles or Pretty in Pink. It has that going for it. It's funny. Um, not, as you can probably tell from my review, it's you know nothing super compelling. It has its funny moments. It's a good movie. I don't think it's as good as a John Hughes movie. Uh, I don't think the dialogue's as good. I don't think the characters are written as well. But if you like that type of movie, that genre, um, 80s romance, high school type stuff, um, and then you've seen all the Hughes movies and you need to check another one out, this is a fine one to go to, you know? So definitely worth a watch if you like Cusack or you really like that genre. So I gave it a, I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. Um, I was thinking of giving it a little bit higher. I, th I was thinking to give it a 4. But the more I thought about it, you know, it is kind of typical. There's nothing super spectacular that really happens. So, decent movie, decent watch. Um, throw it on if you want to. Have nothing else to do. You want to check out a early Cusack. And, of course, it does have that iconic, um, you know, him holding the stereo over his head, playing some Peter Gabriel. You know, if you want to see that scene and the context of it and everything. Which I did. I, I knew that scene, but I never really knew the context within the movie. So, yeah. Uh, super short review. Um, so, I guess for my sign-off, I'll say, I gave her my heart, she gave me a pen.